Hey everybody, this is Kevin at Ken Sewing Center in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Hey, as you can tell, we've got a huge selection of Janome presser feet, and we're going to give you a good description of what each one of these does. It can be confusing, but I'll tell you, Janome really does think out and think for the customer and all the presser feet they made to go with their machine. So let's take a look at all these presser feet. I'm going to give you a good run through what each one does and how it can enhance your sewing experience. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about all the different Janome accessories. Janome has one of the largest catalogs of accessories that are available on the market. They have a lot of models that are available, so to utilize these machines to their maximum potential and do all the different sewing applications, they're constantly working on new accessories to make for the machines so you can do more with them. So let's dive into all these feet. I'm going to talk to you about terms like low shank, high shank, memory craft, horizontal, uh, I also will talk maybe just a little bit on oscillating systems. Now, Janome makes machines that do a maximum stitch width of 7 millimeters, and then they also make a series of machines that does a maximum stitch width of 9 millimeters. In this video, we're going to be talking about all the presser feet and attachments that work with 7 millimeter models. Now, within the 7 millimeter model uh, machines, we're going to have low shank machines, we're going to have high shank and then the majority of all of them also use the snap-on and snap-off presser feet. So let's start talking about some of the different walking feet or even feed feet that are referred to. And we'll also you'll find in the industry when you're talking to us or seeing things on different websites, uh, some stitches are called different terms, same way with presser feet and shank systems. So we're here to try to clear up a lot of that and help you. So at any time that you're looking on our website or need to give us a call, feel free to do so and we can help you with what presser foot or attachment is compatible with your machine. Real quick, I want to talk to you the differences in low shank and high shank. Here I've got a low shank presser foot and here is a high shank presser foot. If you'll notice the distance between the sole of the foot here and where we attach the foot to the presser bar, there's a bigger gap here versus this here being a low shank where the sole of the foot is to where it attaches. So this is a low shank, referred to by Janome as a horizontal rotary hook system uh, presser foot. We just generally most of the time call them low shank. Uh, and this, this will be the high shank or what works with the memory craft series. So generally I'll refer to these as high shank and this is low shank to make it easy. Now on the walking foot, what is a walking foot? It's also referred to as an even feed foot. The even feed foot allows us to work with the feed dogs that's built into our machine if we're working with a spongy material like say we're doing a quilt with our batting, the bottom and the top, that's real spongy and you'll have a fabric shift a lot of times and as the needles penetrate in the garment right here a lot of times you'll have that fabric shift and you can get skipped stitches. So the even feed or the walking foot, what it does, it has a set of feed dogs here in white and those feed dogs will work in the same ratio as the feed dogs built into your machine. And as we attach it to the machine, this rests right on top of where the needle bar clamp is. So as my machine is stitching right along, this is moving up and down, this is engaging the feed dogs to feed that thicker material. So if you're working with uh, a quilt you're working with, sometimes some fabrics have a slick finish to them and that causes a problem. We're going to need a walking foot to achieve that and feed that through all at one time right when the needle's penetrating the garment. The material is flat so the needle is going to penetrate it straight up and down and I'm not going to have skipped stitches. I'm going to have a pretty quilt, a pretty garment, whatever I'm working with. So also if you'll notice on these attachments, there's a little guide right here. And what's that for? Well, the majority of all the Janome Even Feed feet will come with a quilt bar. And a quilt bar is gonna pop right in here. And then I can measure off from my needle to the edge of this guide a certain seam allowance. If I do in decorative uh, stitching and rows, I wanna keep those the same apart. Anything that I wanna use a guide for, it just easily slides in and slides out with no problem whatsoever and the quilt bar will come with most of the walking feet that are available. It's a really handy tool. If you'll also notice and look at the snap-on adapter that's on your sewing machine to use the snap-on, snap-off presser feet, on the very back side of that adapter, you'll find a place, a little nodule. This actually works with your snap-on adapter as well. So if you use your regular presser feet and have an extra guide, this is a very handy tool for that. Now there are different types of even feed feet. This one is just called a standard 
seven millimeter horizontal foot. So the distance between here and here is gonna be seven millimeters. If you'll notice, this here is all metal where I have, and Janome does make an open toe. And this is the open toe version of that. If you'll notice right here, there's a big distance, or a big gap right here. So I have more visibility in front of the needle. So as I'm stitching right along, if you're doing uh, say an applique or something where you just like greater visibility. Both of these work equally well. Some people prefer the uh, standard one because I have more metal that's touching my fabric, keeping all the fabric down flat. Some people like this one because it has greater visibility. Both of them work very well uh, on the machines and do the same job. So do check those out. Now there's also a third uh, attachment that Janome makes. It's called the convertible even feed foot. So if you want the best of both worlds, you can get what's called the convertible even feed foot. It comes with all these accessories right here. I'm going to have my standard toe right here. I'm also going to have the open toe that comes with it. And this pops on and off right here real easy, with no problem at all. And then you get extra guides that'll come with this. This is the stitch in the ditch guide. This right here allows me to do the ditch quilting with my walking foot attached. It's a really big, large guide that'll help me achieve that. And I can move this, snap it right here. I can move it in and out, do all kinds of things with that. And then I have the standard guide. I have a little screw right here that I can move this over, left or right. However I want to use that for the application that I'm working with, you're going to get all this in one kit. Now this one here actually happens to be for a low shank. Janome does make this as well for a high chain. This is called the convertible even feed foot set. This is called a horizontal or a memory craft walking foot. And this one is the open toe. It's available as well in low shank and also high shank. And Ken's will carry all of these. Again, just have your model number ready if you're not sure which one you need. We're gonna be glad to help you find the right accessory for what you're doing. Now, if you already have a walking foot and you wanna purchase the ditch quilt guide and the adjustable quilt guide, you can get that for your even feed foot. Janome does make that. You're going to get that stitch in the ditch guide and you're also going to get the standard guide. We'll carry that as well. We'll have SKU numbers on the websites to direct you to that. A lot of the attachments that we have on our website, we do have detailed videos of how these are used. And if we don't have a video and you need to know how it's used, you can always call us or drop us an email and we can help you get more information on how this particular foot or attachment will work with your machine. Now, this attachment has been one of the most popular that Janome has ever come out with. This is called the Clear View Quilt Foot and Guide Set. You're going to get the clear quarter inch seam allowance foot. Now this particular presser foot has a lot going on with it here. You've got all these different guides, lines, and in the instructions it talks about what every guide is for. We have a little diagram on the website, but this is for the seven millimeter models. And it's a straight stitch foot for quarter inch. So you're going to get the quarter inch, you're going to get the eighth inch, you can use it for a scant quarter inch foot. And then if you'd like to have the guides attached, all you have to do is attach those guides right to the, the attachment. There's instructions on, you're going to get the ditch guide and then you get the quarter inch guide that slides right up on to the foot. Here I've got it with the quarter inch guide attached. Easily just loosen that screw and I can put the different guides onto the foot. And here I've got it set up for the stitch in the ditch. So get all that here, this quarter inch guide, the stitch in the ditch guide, there's instructions inside here to help you learn how to use the attachment. You can use this for quarter inch sewing if you're doing piecing. The clear foot just gives us greater visibility onto the attachment for what we're doing. There's a lot of different quarter inch seam allowance feet that Janome makes. Here we have the standard quarter inch seam allowance foot. It's all metal. We're going to have the ability to do the straight stitch and I've got the guide already attached. This guide is not removable and it's right here to allow me to get that perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Then on the back side of the foot we have all metal that's touching my fabric. This is going to be a real slick finish to it to help me feed that material right along. This is the quarter inch seam allowance foot for snap-on seven millimeter models. Now here I have the what's called the custom craft zigzag foot. Uh, a lot of times we refer to this as an open toe foot. You'll hear that term quite a bit. Janome calls this the custom 
crafted zigzag foot. Now this is going to be a for a seven millimeter model. It's a snap-on presser foot. If you're doing applique, you're doing decorative stitching and you want greater visibility in the front, you don't want any plastic getting in the way of your visibility, then the open toe foot is a great foot for doing that. This is one of the more popular presser feet that Janome has come out with. It's been in their line for several years now. But if you're doing applique work or doing, say, satin stitching or doing some decorative stitching, this is the number one presser feet that most people want to use for that because I have a clear foot. It's going to give me that more visibility. The front's open for me. And it's going to slide right along on the back side of the presser foot here. I've got a metal sole plate here that's not going to cause any friction on my fabric. So if I'm doing any type of sewing all my fabric, if it's a strange fabric, maybe it's got a texture to it, this is just going to help that glide right over top of the fabric so it's not bunching up or puckering on me. So do check out the Custom Craft Zigzag Foot, also referred to as the Open Toe Foot. Another popular quilting uh, presser foot is the ditch quilting foot and this is for the seven millimeter models. I'm going to have a fixed guide here in black and this really shows up on my fabric. If you have any lighter color fabric it's going to show up. But I'm going to have this guide here that's going to keep me in the ditch or that same ditch as I'm sewing right along. This has been one of the best selling presser feeds you know me has ever come out with. The ditch quilting sewing technique has been very popular in the past several years but having a presser foot that's going to be all metal so that guide stays fixed and keeps me in the ditch as I'm sewing right along. And when I look on the back side of the foot here, you'll notice this particular guide, it goes way down. So that's what's going to keep me in there and not allow me to sew left or sew right. It's going to keep me right in the center where I need to be. So do check out the Janome Ditch Quilting Foot, one of the most popular quilting attachments Janome has ever come out with. Now I want to show you the difference in the standard quarter inch presser foot that we've showed you earlier and you hear a term called scant quarter inch presser feet. A lot of times I've gotten phone calls telling me, say, Kevin, hey, I'm using the quarter inch foot and my quarter inch seam allowance is not coming out right. Well, a scant quarter inch is basically just almost just, just one or two needle widths uh, on the width. So you can move your presser foot you can move the needle bar over just, just one, if you use a computerized machine, just move it over one touch on the stitch width to move that needle over, and that will help you achieve the scant. But however, it's a lot easier to do it on the scant quarter inch foot. If you've got them side by side, you really can't tell a difference in where this guide is and where the metal is on that foot, but it is basically just a needle width difference in the two, and this is gonna allow you to achieve that scant quarter inch. We get these from Janome, they're loose, they won't come in any kind of carded packaging. Uh, we sell literally hundreds of these every year and at quilting shows, this is called the scant quarter inch foot. It's gonna have that guide on it for me. This is gonna save you so much grief and heartache when you're doing your quarter inch seams if you're needing to get that scant quarter inch seam allowance. So do check that one out on the website. This is the standard quarter inch. This is our scant quarter inch foot. This is gonna be all silver in color, that way if you do purchase these to keep them apart from the standard quarter inch foot and the guide on the standard quarter inch foot is black, so that helps you differentiate the two. Here I've got the straight stitch foot. Now the straight stitch foot is used so many times for a lot of different uh, sewing applications. You quilters like the straight stitch foot. If you're doing piecing, you're just doing straight stitch only. Well this foot is very wide, it's helping keep the fabric that I'm sewing on flat as that needle's penetrating the garment. A lot of times this is used on lighter weight or delicate fabrics to achieve that. On the bottom side, you may be using this in conjunction with a straight stitch needle plate, and that gives you the best of both worlds. If you don't have a straight stitch needle plate and you're doing piecing, you won't get the best quality stitch on your machine, then get a straight stitch foot. It's gonna allow you to get a lot better job. It's gonna look so much better on top. This is gonna keep that fabric flat for me as that needle's penetrating the garment. That's gonna help with that. Now, this is a snap-on, snap-off presser foot. Real easy for me to use. You can use this on a mechanical. You can use this on a computerized machine with no problem whatsoever. This also can be used to help me achieve my quarter inch uh, as well. From the distance from here to here is gonna be one quarter inch as well. So do check out that straight stitch foot. If you have a machine that does use a straight stitch needle plate, I always do recommend if you're doing piecing 
Or if you're doing free motion to get a straight stitch needle play, that's going to keep fabric on top of the play. It's going to have less uh, of an opening for the fabric to go down and maybe get into your bobbin case area. So do check out the straight stitch foot. This is going to work on all the horizontal models, which are basically snap on, snap off, has the top drop in bobbin. A horizontal rotary hook system is a top drop in bobbin system. Here I've got the applique foot. Now what does the applique foot do for me? Well, if you'll notice, it's all clear. If you're doing the technique of applique, we're attaching a fabric on a quilt a lot of times or a garment to embellish your garment, you're in maybe putting a design. A lot of times, to give you a good example, if we're doing a quilt and we're putting a star on that particular quilt, we've got a lot of points, a lot of curves we've got to go around. So we need greater visibility when we're doing that. And the applique foot, the way it's designed on the underneath side, it's going to allow me to maneuver around curves and points so much better than using a standard foot. You can do applique with the standard straight stitch zigzag foot that come on your machine. However, it's going to be a lot more difficult to do that because I can't see as well and I'm not going to be able to maneuver as well the way this foot is designed. It's going to allow me just to glide around curves and when I'm attaching one piece of fabric to another, there's naturally going to be edges to the fabric. So if I'm putting that star on a quilt, I'm going to have the edge of that material that I'm having to work with as well to make sure it doesn't bunch up or pucker on me. So the applique foot is one you'd want to have. We see that used so many times for quilters and also when you're doing garment sewing, maybe you're embellishing a design, adding a design piece of fabric to a, uh, a coat or a shirt or something like that. The applique foot will allow us to do that. We can use this on all the snap on, snap off, uh, seven millimeter models that Janome makes. Now a lot of the packaging, a big majority of all the uh, presser feet that we do sell will come with this packaging. If you do get this foot in a package, uh, you will get some instructions that'll come with it, but we'll have a lot more information on the website on all the different presser feet. A lot of times we have some product videos of how those work. Uh, sometimes we purchase the uh, same foot from Janome loose in a bundle. Uh, but a lot of times because the pricing is a lot better to do it that way, we can help you over the phone or by email on how to use these particular pressure feet. So do check out the applique foot. The binding attachment is a great attachment to have if you're wanting to put a ribbon or a binding on a quilt or on the edge of a piece of material. This particular foot, when it's on the machine, this part of the attachment is going to be pointing upward so you can see what you're doing. It's going to allow me, I'll put my binding right here in this curve, and then the material I'm attaching it to goes right through the center here. So as I'm stitching through my material right here, it, the fold comes right down as the needle's penetrating the garment, as that needle's penetrating the garment right here, and it's tacking all that down. So the fabric's going to be moving this way as I'm stitching right along. This is a snap-on. Uh, presser foot and then I do have a little gauge on the side here if I measure from this distance from here to here I can trim my ribbon or the binding that I'm working with and it's going to fit perfectly right in here for me so I don't have to worry about having to trim excess or getting too much in here and the machine can't handle it it, it bunches it up or wads it up here where my needle is stitching so you get a, a perfect professional look with this particular a binding attachment. It does work on all the snap-on, snap-off presser feet. It does work on all the snap-on, snap-off models, whether it's a computerized model or a mechanical model. If you're a quilter or a garment sewer home deck, this is a great attachment to have in your sewing room. Now here I have the Janome zipper foot. Now Janome makes this same attachment for all the low shank and all the high shank. Here I have the one for the low shank You'll notice the distance from here to here versus the high shank. The distance from right here to here is going to be greater. So do make sure when you're purchasing this or looking, if you know that your machine's a high shank or a low shank. Both these feet have the same number of features to it, but getting that is going to be critical for it working with your particular model. Now the nice thing about this attachment, it does quite a bit. Yes, it is for zippers. If you'll notice right here, I have a little half moon cut out. That's where my needle is going to go through as I'm stitching into my garment. I can loosen this screw right here. I put this around the presser foot bar and you'll screw this right home with the, the attachment screw that come with your machine. So it's going to be on my machine like this so that I can move this guide out 
left or right of center. So no matter what I'm working with, if I've got, a, say, a metal part of a zipper in the way, I can do that if there's a seam in the way, I can move it around, and I can just snugly tighten this little screw down, and this foot's not going to move. So that's where my needle's going to go. I can also use the middle part here as well. So depending on what's going on with the zipper, the application I'm doing, if I need to stitch down through here, I'm able to use it as well. Then I can move it over here and use this side of the foot as well. You also can use this for attaching cording or larger piping. So if I'm sewing right along, let's just say this stiletto here is a piece of piping or heavy cording. I can run this right up against it. I've got that half moon there where my needle's going to be going, and I can use that just to attach the very edge of that cording or piping that I'm working with to the garment. So this particular attachment is many times referred to as a zipper cording and piping attachment. This will work with all the low shank models. This one here works with all the high shank uh, seven millimeter models, which is going to be a lot of the memory craft models that's on the market. Do check out those Janome zipper presser feet. The darning foot is typically an optional accessory, and then you can use this with all the Janome seven millimeter models. The darning foot will come in a low shank version and also will come in a high shank version. Uh, if you're doing free motion quilting, a lot of our quilters really like this particular attachment for doing free motion stippling. You'll drop your feed dogs when you're using the darning foot, and then you use this particular part right here, which is clear, and as it's on my machine, just pretend like we have this on our machine, this particular one is an open toe front. So it gives me greater visibility of what I'm doing. These little red lines just helps me, helps that opening pop out toward me as I'm doing free motion. But I'm able to darn a hole on a pair of, say, blue jeans, or if I'm uh, wanting to do free motion stippling on a quilt, this is going to have a hopping action to it as I have it on the foot. This particular foot will move up and down. This will come in contact with my fabric while the needle's coming down, and then it hops up, and I'm moving my fabric. So you'll have your feed dogs drop. This is the open toe version. I have the standard version here, which a lot of people really like, and it has the closed toe. Again, it's clear so we can see. I've got the red lines here just to really help me uh, see what I'm doing. It helps the guide pop out. It helps me differentiate where I'm sewing, my stitching, and my garment. So if I'm darning that hole or doing the free motion work, this is coming into contact with my fabric. It's hopping up and down as I'm moving that material. So as it hits my fabric, it keeps the fabric stable just long enough as that needle is penetrating the garment. And this is something the machine stitching very fast as I'm sewing right along there as I'm using this particular attachment. So check it out on our website. We'll have a little bit more information about the darning foot. We have them for the high shank and the low shank. If you're into quilting or just for your regular utility sewing of uh, darning a hole or if you wanted to, if your machine is not a computerized embroidery machine and you want to do an uh, embroidered a monogram, you actually can draw off with a piece of, uh, say, a chalk pen, draw off a letter, and you can use a zigzag stitch, make it into a satin stitch, and I can use this to free motion a letter onto a garment. That takes some practice, but you can do that with any Janome sewing machine that has drop feed and using the darning foot. A lot of times this foot is referred to as a free motion foot. Now, Janome does listen to their customers as time has went on. Uh, doing free motion has evolved quite a bit. It's a technique that does take some practice, but with your machine and the practice you do, you'll be able to achieve a very professional look on the material you're working with with any Janome sewing machine that has drop feed. So as time has went on, Janome has come out what's called the convertible free motion foot. We have showed you here, this is the closed toe. This is gonna be the open toe. Now I want the ability to do more things with one attachment. This particular attachment, this one is the low shank version. Janome makes this also in a high shank, but I have a real small metal stippling head here. And that's gonna give me a lot more visibility. This is not gonna hop on the material. It's gonna just rest right above the material that I'm working with. So as you know, time goes on, as the year goes on, if I'm making a quilt in the winter time, I wanna make it with a lot of batting so I can stay warm. Or you may be making a quilt like a wall hanging and you don't need a lot of batting, it's gonna be really thin. So on this particular attachment, I have a guide right here. If you'll notice, You'll notice this little dial here. I can move this dial and it's gonna raise the position 
of my foot up or down. So if I'm you know, doing that thicker uh, quilt, I can raise the head of this foot up so I'm not bearing down into the quilt as I'm doing free motion. It's just gonna give me so much more uh, flexibility and I'm gonna get a lot better quality product. Now I can remove the heads on this particular foot. There's one little screw right here and I loosen that up, this will pop off and then I can I get with this kit the open toe free motion. This gives me greater visibility, it's all metal. I can do the same thing, raise and lower it, and I have that visibility there for doing my free motion work. And then I also will get the Echo stippling foot. It'll come with that as well. I have all my grid markings. I have the bowl shape here that will help me do free motion. Some people like to have them from time to time. Well, you'll use all three of these, and because I can raise and lower this, it makes the best of both worlds there. A lot of times we'll sell these when customers want to put their machine onto a quilting frame and having that small, just like the long arm machines, you'll have that small stippling head, this metal right here, that's gonna make it so much easier as I'm moving that particular machine on the quilting frame down the length of the frame and doing the free motion. It's worth the investment to go with the convertible free motion quilting foot set. Another popular quilting technique that has been, I'd say just in the past four or five years, is the ruler foot sewing. If you have a ruler and you want to do a straight line on a quilt, you want to make sure that the foot does not come up over that ruler and you sew into the ruler. You could damage your foot, damage the machine, you could damage the ruler, and mess up your project. So Genomi has developed these particular three and they work with different models. We'll go in a little bit of detail of the features of each one of these and what they're used for. We've shown you in this video uh, the difference in the low and the high shank. If you'll notice here, this one is the low shank and this one is the high shank version. The ruler foot, what it's going to do for me, if you'll notice right here on my the stippling head, is very thick. So if I'm sewing right along, we'll just pretend like this is a ruler. As I'm sewing right along here, I don't have to worry about it hopping up over. I've got this big long guide that's going to rest right up against my ruler. But just like the convertible free motion feet, Janome's thought this out. There's dozens and dozens of different rulers on the market, different thicknesses. Used to, you'd have to tell the company what particular model you had so they could sell you the correct ruler. We would have literally hundreds of different rulers in stock and it got very confusing. Janome simplified that dramatically with this particular attachment because now I can change this little dial, I can just turn it, and I can raise the position of that head up or down. If I've got a thicker ruler, I can move that up or down. If my ruler's really thin, I can adjust this head down even further, and I don't have to worry about as I'm going somewhere along it hopping over top and I'm going into my ruler. This particular task will work on all the low shank. Genomi miles doesn't matter if it's mechanical or computerized. I'm gonna be able to attach it right here to the pressure foot bar and you'll use the pressure foot bar screw that come with your machine to attach it, and I can use that, it doesn't matter. This one here is compatible with all the high shank memory craft models, either for seven millimeter, or as you get into the nine millimeter models. This is the correct one that you'll wanna have. It does the same thing, but now this one, there's one additional uh, feature to it. I can take this particular screw out right here, and there's different heads that are available. We carry, it's called the, the quilt frame set. You can get an open toe for this. You can also get a standard uh, closed toe and work with the ruler foot. So you can use it for your free motion as well. But this will come with it standard in the box, just like it is. This is for all the seven millimeter high shank or all of the nine millimeter uh, models that Genomi has come out with in this the past few years. Now I have the ruler foot for straight stitch only models. Now this encompasses the Genomi 1600P series. If it's a 1600P DB, DBX, or a QC, this is gonna work. This also is gonna work with a lot of other brands. So all the machines that's on the market that's straight stitch only. Uh, you have your brother PQ series. You'll have the El Nita EF1 series. You'll have the Juki TL series. These will work with all those particular brands as well because the way the the high shank is, and the needle clearance here is different from a standard seven or nine millimeter machine or a standard seven millimeter machine. 
So it makes a difference where the position this lines up. Now on Janome, their 1600 piece series doesn't have drop feed. So they do include the straight stitch needle plate. They will actually raise it up. The feed dogs do not come through here. So it raises up enough so the feed dogs are not coming into contact with my material. And I'm able to use it just like I am with the other ones. This can raise and lower the heads so no matter what type of ruler that I'm working with. I can adjust it for that or for the garment that I'm working with. So do check out the Janome ruler foot set. If you want to attach tape or ribbon to the edge of a garment, then you want to take a look at the Janome taping guide set. This is for the seven millimeter snap-on models. All those that have the top drop-in bobbin, you can use this for the front-loading bobbin system as well. Just keep in mind from here to here is going to be seven millimeters. So if you have a smaller model, like a five millimeter model, you're not going to be able to utilize all the foot but it really doesn't matter. Your machine can only do so much as far as the width goes. But here I have different millimeters and width of tape that I can work with. I have a guide right here. All I have to do is loosen this foot. I can move it over and roll this down. I can get it to the increment that I want and I'm able to attach to the edge of a garment. My garment's going to go through here and I'll have the binding or the, edge, the taping that I'm working with is going to fit right around here and as the machine is stitching, it's going to stitch it all down at the same time. So maybe you can see that groove. My material will be going right, right through here as that tape is folded over it. So the machine will be stitching it down right here. It will come with a detailed instructions with this particular attachment. On the back, there's also a little sheet inside that will give me some more information. There are videos on the website showing you a little bit more about the taping guide foot. If you're working with leather, velvets, materials maybe that are um, sticky or maybe have a texture to them and you're having a hard time with the machine stitching there, the fabric maybe is bunching on you, uh, we see this a lot with leather or vinyls or with the machine, you want to take a look at one of these two presser feet here. Uh, again, in the sewing industry, you'll hear this particular foot referred to as several different terms. Janome calls this the ultra glide foot. I've heard this foot referred to as a smooth foot, uh, as a Teflon foot. It's a solid plastic foot and the material that it's made out of is very slick. It's very smooth on the other side. Now there's a little groove on the back side here where, all the way around where the needle's going to be penetrating the garment and that also uh, keeps the fabric from bunching up as it if you're sewing right along, but the ultra glide foot is a foot to have if you're working with these type of materials. Another attachment that uh, Janome has come out with is called the roller foot. And this has been in the line for oh, 30 years or longer. The roller foot gives me three wheels and what it does, if, let's say that I'm working with a piece of leather, garment grade leather. As this big wheel is rolling, this is my fabric coming this way, as that wheel is rolling right along, it's going to keep that fabric flat right where my needle is going to be penetrating the garment right here. And then I have these two wheels on the back side, keeping everything flat and, and pressed down as I'm sewing right along. It gives me just greater flexibility, maneuverability over those materials when I'm working with a vinyl or any garment of velvet that has a texture to it that may cause a problem with the fabric bunching up or uh, puckering on me. Those wheels are critical in keeping that fabric flat and not sticking. The foot's not going to stick to it and, and jerk right along. It's going to be all one smooth operation. It's clear so I can see what I'm doing as well. That helps quite a bit. So a lot of times uh, customers may have a problem seeing with the ultra glide foot, then go with the rotor foot. Uh, both of these attachments are great. If you're having problems feeding materials that has a texture to it, it uh, is causing the machine to pucker it or it uh, bunch up on you. All these attachments here are going to be snap-on presser feed. They all have a guiding system to them and they're used for different applications. If I'm doing an attaching cording or small piping to a garment, I want to use this cording foot here. The cording foot allows me to use the front of this kind of as a guide if I'm say on the edge of a piece of material and I'm embellishing the edge of something, I want to attach one, two, or three cords. I'm able to do that. The cords will go up under this little black bar here and it just holding it down just enough. So as I start feeding here, the machine is going to be moving this way. The fabric will be moving this way. So my cording naturally, I'll put it up underneath the foot and it's going to be moving this way. So the machine will tack that down for me. On the back side of the foot, I also have a little guide here 
that keeps all that straight and nice and neat for me. So if you want to embellish or add cording or small piping to a garment, then you want to use the cording foot. If you want to attach ribbons or sequins to a garment, Check out the ribbon sequin foot. What it's gonna do, I have this guide here on the front of the machine. If you'll notice this little indention, that's where I'll slide my ribbon or my uh, chains of sequins in. It's gonna keep it straight while the needle's gonna be penetrating, attacking that on right here onto my garment. This is a snap-on, snap-off pressure foot. I've got a seven millimeter width clearance right here for all the snap-on uh, models. So the ribbon sequin foot is just going to take all the worry out of me keeping everything straight and flat because all my excess ribbon, taping, whatever I'm working with, is going to be out here. So as the machine is stitching right along, it goes through this chamber, it's going to keep all that flat for me. So right when that needle penetrates the chain, it keeps it flat and it tacks it onto the garment. It's going to look so pretty embellishing something and adding that to a garment. So you can achieve, and, and people, customers will tell me well, I can attach ribbon or sequins. With my standard foot, if you can keep everything straight and not have to worry about it, then fine, yes you can. But Genomi has seen the need for adding this particular presser foot to their line. This is going to take the worry out of that for you. If you're needing greater visibility when you're attaching uh, pieces of material together, if you need extra guide, if you're doing decorative stitching onto a garment, then you want to look at the border guide foot. That border guide foot is going to actually work whether the type of application on the garment I'm working with, if uh, everything I'm needing to do is on the right hand side of the foot or the left hand side of the foot, I have the best of both worlds here. This covers a lot of surface area on my material, so when this foot is attached and I've got it on my garment, it's pressing down all this area right here so it's going to keep that garment flat for me as the needles penetrate in the garment it's going to greatly reduce any puckering and it's going to just make your garment look so much nicer on top so the guides along here you're able to measure off and you're able to get that seam allowance you're needing or if you're doing decorative rows of stitching you're able to get those the same width apart every time just by following that guide so the border guide foot can be used for a lot of different things other than just doing the decorative stitching because the way this attachment is made if you're working with a say a lighter weight piece of material it's just naturally going to keep all that fabric here flat while it's feeding through giving you the likelihood of having any puckering is greatly reduced with this particular attachment. If you're sewing along the edge of a piece of material you want to make sure that you stay right snugly up against the edge of what you're sewing with. The edge guide foot is one you want to add to your sewing room. It's a snap-on, snap-off presser foot. This little guide right here, this solid white piece is my guide and my fabric's going to rest right up against here. This is going to be the edge of the material that I'm sewing along and I want to make sure I stay perfectly on the edge as I'm doing stitching. Maybe I'm doing a zigzag or I'm doing a decorative stitch that where my needle's going to be moving over this way. I can loosen this little nut here and it's going to move my guide over this way. I can use these red markings which are in millimeters apart as my reference guide if I want to make sure and have my decorative top stitching so far away, so many millimeters away from the edge, I'm able to do that with no problem whatsoever and I use this as my guide. So the edge guide foot is one you want to add. We have more information on this particular attachment. It's a relatively new attachment Janome's come out with. It's optional uh, for most of the models that are out there. I don't know of any particular model Janome makes. This comes with the standard. So this will add so many more things for you. And all of us do from time to time, sewing on the edge of a piece of material. You want to add that edge guide foot. One of the main reasons you buy a sewing machine is for certain applications. And everybody from time to time is going to put in a zipper. Uh, and we always worry about the metal part or the plastic part of a zipper hitting that as we're sewing along. Well, the concealed zipper foot is going to allow us to rest right up against the teeth, whether it's the metal teeth or plastic teeth, of a, a zipper that's going to get, go right through here as my needle is stitching right here. If you'll notice on the very front of this foot, I have this little ear here. This just keeps me as a guide. I can be looking at it. The teeth, once it rests on top of those teeth of your zipper, it's going to rest through the groove as my needle is stitching down into the fabric that's right up against that metal zipper. I don't have to worry about my machine or the needle hitting that metal part of the zipper and you're going to achieve that concealed zipper look and not worry about doing any damage to your machine. This is an all metal foot. 
with the grooves on the back side. This here, this particular mask, it's gonna be really slick. A lot of times around a zipper, that material is really lightweight. Where they're attaching at the factories that make zippers, all that's really lightweight. So we wanna make sure we got a lot of surface area touching to the left and the right of the zipper so it keeps all that fabric flat while the zipper is going through here, the metal or the plastic part of your zipper is going right through here, and then my machine is gonna be stitching that down right here. It is optional on all the Janome sewing machines, and Ken Sewing Center will carry all the different zipper feet, so maybe you don't know which zipper foot you need for the type of job you're doing. Feel free to call us or check all of them out on the website for more information. A big majority of all the Janome sewing machines will come with a hammer foot, and generally, uh, the hammer foot that comes with your machine is more than likely a two millimeter or a three millimeter fold. And what is a hammer foot? You've he heard that referred to many times as a row hem. It's basically folding the fabric over for edging. Say you're doing a napkin, a lighter weight piece of material, and you want to fold that over. Your fabric will go right in this little groove here, and the machine, naturally, as it's feeding, it's folding it over through this metal chamber right here. So when it hits right here where my needle's penetrating the garment, it's gonna tack that down for me for your rolled hem edge. Now this actually will do a four millimeter hem. So you're gonna have a four millimeter distance on that edging. They do make, and it does come with the four and the six millimeter. This is a little bit larger. So you're gonna have a six millimeter fold. And Janome also does, like we say, a lot of the machines will come with a two or three millimeter, which is really, really small. So as we find out and again, Janome listens to their customers. Customers are wanting the ability to do a wider hem because a two millimeter is very, very narrow. So, so is a three. So you'll get with this the four millimeter or the six millimeter. You've got the groove here for your stitching. It's a seven millimeter width a foot. You get all this in one kit. If you're wanting to attach rows of beading, then you want to get the beading foot set. Now this will come with everything you see here. There are instructions with this on how to use it, but everybody's seen uh, rows of beads or pearls, and you can tack that down onto a garment to embellish it. And Janome gives you the two different sizes. This smaller one here has a groove in it for doing like a two millimeter uh, diameter size of beading, and this will go from two and a half millimeters to four millimeters uh, size of beading. So it rests right on top, This the big groove right here that you see, it'll rest right on top of the chain that you're working with. Uh, you could also use this if you're wanting to stitch down the middle or the very edge of a big piece of cord. Uh, it'd be a little bit more difficult, but you could do that. But for a chain of beads, uh, you can use this. It rests right on top here, so that's gonna keep everything straight as the needle's gonna be tacking that down. You're gonna be doing a small, maybe zigzag in between each one of the, the beads, and it just rests right over top allows you to keep everything straight. Now on the back side, you'll notice I have open right here and then I have open in the back. So it's gonna keep all that straight for me. And I'm gonna be sewing pretty slow to tack that right on, but you're gonna keep everything straight. So if you're doing really small beads to larger beads, you'll get all that in one kit. It will have instructions with it on how to use it. Ken Sewing Center can help you if you have uh, any further questions when you're using this. Don't hesitate to drop us an email or give us a call, and we'll be glad to help you. The Janome Pentuck foot set will give you two different Pentuck feet. These are snap-on feet. You will get the very narrow groove, and you'll get the wide, or what's called many times as a deep groove. This is used in embellishment. A lot of times I see it used in uh, little girls' dresses, uh, whether it be a baby. Uh, for a lighter weight material. So what it's gonna do, we have these grooves on the back side to install the pin tuck. If you want them to be very, very narrow, use this narrow pin tuck. This is a seven groove pin tuck foot, or we have the five deep groove. These will make bigger pin tucks. And because once we utilize this foot to the fullest width, we can actually move over and use the very last pin tuck as our guide, resting in that foot right on that pin tuck on top and sewing right along to install even more. So with this particular foot, there will be instructions that comes with it of how to use it, how to set your machine up, what stitch you need to be on, the recommended stitch length and width for installing a pin tuck. We have uh, other videos on the website talking about the pin tuck foot, but this particular set will work with all the seven millimeter models. There are snap on and snap off. You'll get both with this particular set. Now I want to talk to you the difference between gathering and ruffling material. And Janome has two different attachments 
for doing these applications. There's a big difference and they're not the same. Gathering is basically uh, when we are wanting to manipulate the machine to bunch or gather the material up right on top of each other. And it's not going to be like the what the rougher does. It's going to, it, in, in theory, I guess you can say it's gathering, it's bunching the fabric up, but it's actually a precise pleat between each gather or it's each ruffle, so to speak. You're going to get a lot better quality job with a ruffler, but this is a little bit pricier attachment than your average uh, presser foot or average attachment. You may want to start off with the gathering foot first. But if you know that you're needing something that's going to be more decorative, more precise, then I would go ahead and spend the extra money and go with the rougher. And we'll talk briefly about what each one does and how it works. They both are snap-on attachments, and here we have the 7mm groove. Now, I'll show you on the side of this what makes this gather. My fabric is going to be moving this way as the machine is stitching right along. Making the stitch length closer to zero is gonna make my stitches closer together. So I'm gonna have more fabric and more stitching being, get, being gathered at one time. If they're further apart, then the gather is not gonna be as profound. So you can play with that. And I recommend just getting some scrap material and try that and see how that works for you. But the gathering foot is one I would definitely recommend going with for giving that decorative gathering or, or you know puckering effect. Here I have the ultimate ruffler. Now this is a very easy attachment to put on. The ruffler has been out for years and years now. I've been here 25 years. It's always been in existence. Uh, the ruffler, or many times people refer to it as a pleating attachment. It will allow me to work with a lot of different types of garments, but all the Janome snap-on, snap-off presser feet, this will work with other brands of snap-on, snap-off uh, presser feet machines as well, but it'll do quite a bit for you. So I'll snap it on my adapter right here. This goes onto my needle bar, and this is what's going to engage it. Is this, my needle's moving up and down, stitching to my material. There's a feeding mechanism. There's a wheel mechanism built in that once it hits a certain level, if I have it set to one, I'm going to have pleats or ruffles that's going to be one stitch apart. So they're going to be very small and very tied against each other. I can have it set on six. So every six stitches, the mechanism will engage. It'll feed, tack down, bunch the fabric or ruffle the fabric, stitch it down, and it moves on six more stitches, so on and so forth. And then I can have it set for 12, which will be the largest. Uh, increment every 12 stitches you're going to get a ruffle so they'll be a lot bigger and further apart. The ultimate ruffler is going to allow me to move the attachment left or right so you'll put it on the machine, turn your hand wheel, make sure that the needle's not hitting the attachment. If it is, then I can loosen this screw on the back side and I can move the mechanism over so it's not hitting the fabric and just snugly tighten this down. On the website, we will have more information on the Ultimate Ruffler and how it's used. Here I have the Janome Popping Foot Narrow. Now, Janome does make two different size popping feet. The standard popping foot is going to be a little bit larger. You won't see this narrow here. It'll just be referred to as a popping foot. But this is a relatively new attachment because a lot of our customers have talked to Janome and they want one that does a smaller, uh, narrow popping, uh, or if you're working with a heavier, larger, maybe cording. It's going to work with that as well. So it's for extremely small piping, but this is going to rest right on top of the piping that I'm working with. It's the groove goes all the way through the foot on both sides, so I can keep all that piping straight as that needle's penetrating the garment. So if you're wanting to embellish a, a garment or add piping to it, take a look at the Janome piping foot. The bi-level <clears throat> bi foot is one of the latest attachments Janome has come out with. For all the seven millimeter models, if you're doing top stitching, the bi-level foot is one I would highly recommend adding to your sewing room because what it's going to do, if I, as I go along the edge here, I have these guys. These are at eight and a half, one and a half, and five millimeters from the edge. I'm able to keep everything straight as I'm doing my decorative top stitching. This is a presser foot that so many people have asked for for quite a number of years now. I have the guides on here to help me keep everything straight as I'm doing my top stitching. So the bi-level foot, check it out on the website. We have a lot more information on this particular foot. 
The fringe foot is a foot if you want to embellish a garment. You're going to have this particular guide right here, this, this metal piece right here. The stitching is going up over this particular guide. So as I have it on the, the machine. This is the low shank version right here, but my stitching is going up and over top of this guide and my fabric is going this way. The thread is going to be coming off the back side and it'll be really fluffy. It has a 3D appearance on the back side. You can use this with any mechanical low shank machine, any computerized low shank machine that does a seven millimeter or five millimeter width stitch. It doesn't matter the brand, it's going to work with any brand. Now Junomi does make this also in a high shank. So for you memory craft owners, you can get that particular pressure foot in the high shank. So do check out the Junomi fringe foot.